Sie so. Combat Cast, episode 13, part 2, featuring Stan the Man Longinides. Now, 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 let's flip it over on the other side. Yeah. What's the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Ooh, this is a good question. I like this a okay. lot. Okay, so, knowing... See, man starves to know and learn. Knowledge is to grow and learn and know it and put it in our mind. But wisdom is to use it. That's the difference. Hey, you talk to people, they go, I know, I know. Well, you know what I say to them? You know, but you do nothing. Yeah, show me that you know. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, did, did you know that, that this and that? And yeah, I know, I know. So, but you did nothing. Yeah. It's like me saying, did you know that you are naturally talented to be the number one rugby player in New Zealand? Did you know? I, I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, yeah, I know. Day, well, then why aren't you doing it? <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, you know, wisdom is to utilize what we know. Otherwise, it's a waste of knowledge, bro. Yeah, beautiful. It's, it's I love beautiful. it. I love it. Yeah. So wisdom is the application of knowledge, and knowledge is just knowing. You know, I think just this knowing. is you do. These are these are golden nuggets right here. Well, absolutely. Hey, I, know, I, I know. I know a lot of people. I'm sure we know a lot of people that know a lot, but they did nothing. Mm. They built a reputation on knowing a lot, but they did nothing. That's when the other challenge comes. In. Well, show me your fruit. Yeah. Show me your fruit of what you know. Now, again, we can dissect that. So what does it mean, bro? How do you define success? When you say fruit, what do you mean? How do you define success? See, this is another topic that we can dissect. Mm. Does it mean that I have to have an empire of dirt that I own to be successful? No. I need to have a bank full of money? No. I'm just saying, how do you define success? This right. is one of the topics, again, you got to put things in perspective, see. Hey, hey, you might say, you know something? I don't have this, but I don't want to overlook this. Mm. The problem is that a lot of us, we overlook the blessings that we have. Hey, we focus on the things that we don't have. Hey, we take for granted a lot of things. Like I started off at the beginning of our talk. Yeah. Hey, I'm grateful. Hey, I never married Steve. I think that was a calling for me for quite some time back. You know, I, I never married, but what I want to say, not focus on that. I'm saying that I played a role as a father figure to a lot of kids, over, over 30, 40 kids, fatherless, you know what I mean? Where I was a part-time father for some kid that doesn't have a father. I'm just saying, because I knew I was blessed to have a wonderful dad and a mum. So what I'm saying is sometimes these topics, you've got to be sensitive about them because, you know, someone's listening and they're going, well, you're lucky, bro. You had a good mum and dad. Mm. Yeah. I know, but all I'm saying is, bro, don't let a bad season, don't let a bad season be what defines your whole life. Mm. Marie and I, with our company, Stand the Man Group, we do a lot of projects with prisoners. There's a program that we're doing at the moment with a prison. And I'm trying to, again, transform their mindset and say, listen, this is a season. Yeah. It's a season. Yeah. There's been others that have come before you gone through this season but they've gone on to do something extraordinary in their life mm. it's just a season so all i'm saying is life is full of seasons and you know if i can encourage your audience by saying listen don't let a shitty day make you feel like you have a shitty life yeah you know, we're going through a bad a challenging period right now we're going through a bad challenging period and just, let me tell you something things may even get worse <laughs> Things may even get worse where people, hey, 
I'm not pointing the finger at you, but some people might need to seek the God that I'm talking about yeah. because if things get worse in this world, hey, most people are going to say, well, God, we've got to hope there is a God because, hey, people blame God for all the bad things that occur. Let me tell you something. God made this world beautiful, but man destroyed it. Man destroyed it, and you can see how and why with everything that takes place. You know, so, again, the most important thing, Steve, in life is what you believe. This is the greatest tool that you say our creator has given us is our mind. The most important real estate, you'll like this one, the most important real estate you will ever own is this and what leases space up here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying to you, people have all these New Year's resolutions and all these things. Hey, you can't move forward with challenges. Uh, you can't, you can't over, overcome obstacles and challenges if you don't kill them in your mind first. You've got to kill those negative thoughts. This is the greatest tool we have. Stan, the next question I want to ask you is what qualities and what attributes do you believe make a great fighter and who in the, the current combat sports world do you believe to date has those attributes? I don't know. To be honest with you, I, 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 with today's fighters, I, I'm trying to think of some of the fighters if I can, but I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but what attributes and qualities would, would you well, say? Look, firstly, they, they firstly the most, uh, yeah, look, for me, this is what's important. If, if, if there's an individual out there that's listening right now who has a dream of doing something or yep. you know, achieving some goals, you know, the most important thing is who's your mentor? Who's your coach? And this is a very important quality. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I'm talking about a quality where it's a partnership where you've got someone that loves you. You know, I, I had a coach that loved me. I had a coach that felt every shot that I took. Mm. And that's, they're the qualities a coach has to have. Yep. I, I'm just saying, because at the end of the day, this is a combat sport and it's potentially very dangerous. Yep. We should never, ever, ever overlook that. It's a tough gig. It's a very tough gig. And that's why I, I firstly don't take for granted how fortunate I am after 22 year career. I mean, uh, and some real battles and wars and some of those battles were worse in the gym. I mean, yeah. some of the challenges and training sessions, sparring sessions that we used to have in the gym would have audiences of people that would throw money. They would throw money in the ring and say, hey, here for your medical, <laughs> medical damage, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, look, it's a tough gig. So when you're a fighter and, you know, you can have a plan and a strategy, but when you go out there and you start to get the shit kicked out of you, you know when you come into that corner, you want to look at your coach in the eyes because you want to listen to every word he says. I mean, that's what, that's what battle is all about. You've got to have a good team of people that you trust. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the other thing too. Look, the, the combat sports, and we know boxing as, you know, a, a sport where, you know, we're like pieces of meat. You know what I mean? It's like a cycle. You know, It's like yep. a conveyor belt. Yep. Today you're the main man and then, it, then it's somebody else. Yep. I mean, people don't give a shit. Everything's about money. Everyone worries about money. All I'm saying is, you know, I don't encourage anybody to fight unless they fight for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I get a guy that comes up to me, he goes, hey, Stan, I want to fight. I go, what do you want to fight? Oh, uh, something I've always wanted. To How old are you? 34. Are you married? Yeah, I've got three kids. Why? <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you better give me a good reason why. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, there's no money. You know, there's no money in it really or whatever. It's hard. It's a tough gig. Mm. People, you know, I'm just saying, there's a, hey, you've got to have a good reason yeah. to want to do what you want to do. And yeah. nothing's changed in that respect, Steve, because many, many, many years ago, I had a great job. My parents were proud of me. Back in the day when the industry, the IT industry was just starting to explode. Mm. I became a computer programmer, had a company car, going to work in a briefcase. My parents were proud of me, bro. Yeah. And I gave it all up. I gave it all up because I wanted to chase my dream. 
the biggest court case I had to represent myself on why I wanted to do what I wanted to do was in the family. I had to convince my mum and dad. My dad could not comprehend it. My dad was so proud that I was earning good money with his company and doing great. And he was so proud. And he said to me, he goes, you want to chase your dream with a sport? The way he put it was a sport that is bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> I'm just saying, because there was no profile yeah. in my sport. Never heard about it in the media. There was no money. There was no heroes. There was nothing. And I said, but that's it, Dad. I, I want to be that. I'm going to become that. You know, I will create a path for others to follow. Mm. And that was fulfilled, Steve, because after all my years, 22 years in the game, I've received so many accolades, so many different acknowledgements and, and awards in different countries all over the world, keys to cities and this and that. But really the greatest moment for me that surpassed anything was to be acknowledged and recognized by the most prestigious sporting accolade that can be bestowed on a sports person in Australia mm -hmm. was the Sports Australia Hall of Fame. And to receive that accolade, and more importantly, what decorated it for me was because my parents were going through some health issues, they were quite ill, but they were, um, it was a wonderful to have their presence in that room to be in such a huge room full of so many high level, I mean, upper echelon like of, of sporting greatness. And, and to be able to receive that recognition in the presence of my parents kind of renewed my moment of greatness, of acknowledgement. So for me, it was the fulfillment of that first thought that yeah. I shared many, many years ago yeah. about putting Australia on the map and et cetera, et cetera. And to be recognized for that was a, a very special moment for me. And having your parents there as well, you know, going yeah. back to yeah. what you were saying before, where your dad was like, bullshit, you know, like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. And then yeah, to, be, yeah. to fast forward to that moment, you know, yeah. what, I mean, how did, how did that moment feel? Like, how did that moment feel when you're standing well, up you there? Know, again, again, while I was up there and receiving my accolade, I actually, yeah. again, honored my parents by saying, if I can just give my parents perspective, because I know a lot of you out here are parents to some of the people that are acknowledged and honoured tonight. But I said, if I can give my parents perspective, my parents waited by the phone in all hours of the morning, depending where I was fighting around the world, because their son was not playing golf or basketball. Yeah. He was in a gladiator's arena fighting some big Godzilla and they were waiting by the phone to hear if their son was okay. So I'm just saying to give that perspective on my parents was a little bit challenging for them as well because don't forget that a lot of pessimism in the early stages about Stan not being very big. I mean, I'm five foot 10, maybe yeah. five eleven, maybe five eleven on a good day. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're kind of like the Zambides of the, the heavyweight division. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, that was ironic. That's how ironic that you brought him up too, because that's a young fella that I, I discovered. Uh, my brother and I did uh, something like 70 seminars in Europe and in Greece. And every seminar that we did in Greece, instructors would bring me their students and say, I've got someone special, have a look. I've got someone special, have a look. And out of all the students we saw, and there was a lot of talented young blokes, but I actually picked up uh, Mike Zambides. Really? And, uh, took him under my wing. I was the first guy, I was the one that uh, discovered him. I brought him to Australia, all his first early five, 12 fights. Wow. He, cool. he, was, he was with me for almost three years. Amazing. Yeah. Dude, that's, you know, and that's so interesting because if you look at it comparatively speaking, he was always going up against these giants. So you would have yeah. been the perfect coach for him, you know, like from a style perspective, experience, everything. You would have been able to yeah. teach him so much, you know. That's that's so cool. Yeah, no, he's a very talented fighter. If you look at his show reel of knockouts, you know, there's not too many that come much better than him, maybe other than the great, um, you know, Ramon, Ramon Decker. You know, like if you right. Decker for me, he's one of the great warriors. He's a warrior. 
<laughs> I remember some stupid journalist one time, they interviewed uh, me and, and Decker when he came out here to Australia. And they said, uh, they said, how do you, uh, how, do we, how do we compare you two blokes? And, and one guy said, stand the gentleman and Decker's a warrior. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I was happy to acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you had this finesse about you, the way you moved, the way you, you fought. I mean, it's interesting for me looking at your style too, your stance. You almost had like a, a Thai style high guard, you know, which I think is quite yeah. uncommon, you know, but to, yeah. especially for this area of the world, you know, and you look at a lot of the K1 fighters, their hands are more here, but you had this kind of like, Muay Thai yeah. style, if you will, you know? No, not, not really. Uh, maybe towards the end a little bit. I think maybe towards... Because, again, that stint. I had a stint in Thailand. Like my, right. That okay. style... Yeah. I mean, normally, normally, like, my mine was boxing style. But, again, part of that was maybe because I was a bit lazy at times. And because I'm small, yeah. I could very easily get kicked in the head. Right. Evidently, as you saw mm. from Mike Bernardo, I was yeah. the same. <laughs> but because I... Yeah. Look... I, I had a training camp. Look, again, I'm saying this and I'm going to be totally honest with you. During my peak was before K1 was born. But mm. during my peak, there was a, you know, Stan the Man was the brand. After I beat Alexio, there was a lot of public demand for me. I was at my peak. <coughs> Country issue wanted me in the K1. But then another opportunity came that if you look at my history and my, my fight career and record, um, there was no world heavyweight champion in Muay Thai. Uh, number one contender, I think, back if I recall correctly, uh, number one contender was Peter Arts, maybe Ernesto Hughes, and some other names that would drop off. And I was ranked number four, I think, and some other names. But the biggest promoter back then in 1996, maybe, yeah, 96, was a, a promoter, and the Thai people will know, his name was... Ratanasuban, he was the biggest promoter in Thailand. Mm. And he came and saw me fight and took a liking to me. And he thought, this is the guy that I need to help me market Muay Thai in the Western world. Wow. So because the title was vacant, he made me fight. And this is me being totally honest and transparent. He fought, he made me fight, not my or Peter, uh, Peter Arts or... Or, or Ernesto Hoos or any other great fighters from the K1. He wanted me to fight, and I fought a guy named... Who did I fight? From uh, England. A, a fighter from England. I forget his name. Jeez, I can't even think of his name right now. But I fought a guy from England. I think he was ranked number 10 or 12. Okay. But, but the truth was, Ratana Suban, the promoter, he wanted me to win the fight. Right. No, it wasn't a fixed fight, but yeah. he, put, he put me against someone. He was sure I was going to win. Right. He could have said, yeah, Stan, you're going to fight Peter Arts. I, you know, whoever it was, I would fight whoever it was. But he made me fight this other kid. I can't think of his name right now. I ended up winning the fight and I became the world champion. That's the fight I lost to against Andy Hug later. If you right. watch the fight, I lost to Andy. Is that, was that a Muay Thai fight? It was a Muay Thai fight. Wow. It was a Muay Thai fight. No, no, I'm not a Muay Thai fighter, to be honest with you. Hey, <laughs> let me tell you something. Hey, that's why I'm, I'm, sharing, I'm sharing with you very <laughs> transparent things now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like it. I like you. I like you, Stephen. I'm sharing with you some really important sort of transparent things. But what, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I fought Andy Hug. It was full Muay Thai. Some people thought, when I fought Andy, some people said, they wrote on a post, oh, dirty fighting by Stan. He's trying, to, he's trying to hit him with an elbow. But elbows were allowed <laughs> because it was full Muay Thai rules. Yeah, me, yeah. And Andy, me and Andy are not Muay Thai, full yeah. on Muay Thai fighters. Yeah, we don't yeah. throw elbows. Hey, bro, I'm a kickboxer. Yeah, I yeah. never claimed to be a Muay Thai fighter mm. or love it. Cool. I mean, hey, I did it because it was uh, an option. Uh, uh, you know, they paid me whatever. It was an option. And it was, again, part of my legacy to become the WMTC World Heavyweight Champion. I ended up fighting Andy Hug, and I got beat by Andy. Now, let me tell you the story. If you watch this fight again with me and Andy, the full version, and you'll understand where I'm coming from. Okay. And again, 
May he rest his soul because we lost Andy too. Another wonderful, great champion, a legend. Yeah. A great, yeah. I, I always say this, you know, and I said it back then, even at the time. When Andy, and, and again, when you fight on that circuit, bro, it's like the tennis circuit, you know? Sometimes it's not uncommon for you to win one, win one, lose one. Mm. Win, lose one. Because it was challenging, good fighters. Anybody at any time could knock somebody out. Yeah. And you, you saw that firsthand with, with Bob Sapp, with Ernesto Hoos, for right. example. Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying to your viewers, bro, all I'm saying to your viewers, at any day, anything could happen differently. On that night with me and Andy, you watched the video, I got wasted. But oh, I'm not making excuses. At any given day, things could be very, very different. Yeah. If you watch that fight again, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying to your audience, if you watch the fight with me and Andy Hinton again, when we have that fight, bro, I land this shot on him, bam! I land this shot on him, and he kind of, you know, he was a bit distraught, and he grabs me, and yep. he bends me over the ropes. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Now, if you watch that properly, bro, he does it twice. It happens twice. Now, I was hurt. Now, looking back, now with my coach, and we re recollected our thoughts, and, and my coach said it was my fault. I should have got involved, and I shouldn't have let you continue. Because, bro, you know all that... You know how you said about my Muay Thai? <laughs> yeah. I freaking I freaking trained eight weeks in in Thailand. Wow. We had a bit of a, a training camp in Thailand with a good camp there. I trained for eight weeks there, bro. Rakanasuban, the promoter, come and watch me train. You know, they all love me. So all I'm saying, I'm not making excuses. All I'm saying is How did you find that training though? Did you enjoy it? No, it was all enjoyable and great. But again, because I'm small, you you said earlier. I put my hands up and went like that. That was the influence from the training camps of me training in Thailand. Mm. Now, when I fought with Andy and I hit him with that left hook, he grabs me and he bends me over the ropes. And if you watch the full version properly, that's not edited, because sometimes you see highlights that are edited yeah. with the interest, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the interest of someone. I mean, I could show you knockouts of mine, uh, of me knocking people down. But I might have lost a fight. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I got they, you. They got show you. show reels. Yeah. If you look at Andy, Andy's people, when they put a show reel together, they show all the good footage, and 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 I got wasted. All I'm saying is, if you watch that fight again in a different perspective with what I've enlightened you with, yeah. if you watch me after he bends me over, hey, bro, the fight turned from that moment onwards. I was never in the fight again. Now, why? I was in pain, but so. Because I didn't show, uh, uh, it was a bad move on my behalf and with my coach. Because when he looked at me, he goes, you can't say, I'm hurting. My back is hurting. But because of the pride, listen carefully, yeah. pride. Hey, I've got Sat Song Chai, Song Chai Ratanasuban, the promoter in the audience. Oh, one Song Chai. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Song Shai Ratanasuban. He's the promoter yeah. I'm talking about. Right, I got, you. I, got I, you. I couldn't think of his first name. Yeah. Ratanasuban, Song yeah, yeah. is his first name. <laughs> All right. Song Chai. So, let me, this is gospel, Steve. Yeah. Gospel. Because he's in the audience, and I've got this pride, bro, this Greek Hellenic. Hey, bro, I trained hard for this fight. You know, I'm not, I'm not a guy that's going to quit. Yeah. And, and because Andy Hug, if you recall this and if you watch the whole show, you'll see I'm not lying. Andy Hug and I were the main event. Right. The fight, the fight before me and Andy was Mike Bernardo, Peter Arts. Wow. That's the fight in the first round. Listen to me, listen to me. I promise you, you're going to sound like I'm making excuses, but it all makes sense and I'm, I'm being gospel, bro. As a man of faith, I'm not lying. Mike Bernardo fights Peter Arts. They fight in the first round, and Peter Arts kicks Mike Bernardo's in the groin, and the fight is over. Oh. Like anti climax in the first round. Oh God. Promoters okay. look nightmare. Promoters hey, look nightmare. Mr. Ishii, the promoter's like, oh man. So listen to this. When I fight Andy, hey bro, I'm not saying, hey, you won't even believe me that he fights it, but I had pride that when I was hurt, I wanted to continue to fight, bro. Mm -hmm. I trained like a, a warrior. I know I can beat Andy. On any day, any given day, anything can happen. I know I can beat Andy. And I wanted to continue. But from that moment onwards, because it even crossed my mind, this is, 
what a weird fighter I am. I'm thinking this is going to be bad because if this fight ends now, what an anticlimax to the show. The two yeah. main fights were yeah. over. This is no bullshit, Steve. I'm telling you the truth. And you know something? You know, after the fight, in the change rooms, we, there was a lot of witnesses, and I even saw it with my own eyes, but there were a lot of witnesses. Kancho Ishii grabbed Andy and slapped him. Andy. Andy. Wow. After the fight, after he beat me, after he knocked me out. Wow. Good on That's him. The gospel truth. Good on gospel him. Gospel truth. He, I recall because Mr. Ishii was happy that he won at the end, but what happened and what occurred, you know, it was almost like he looked at me like, he looked at me with this acknowledgement like I owe you one. You know, like, yeah, because I could have, I could have not continued, bro. Let me say this: I could have been the wise, smart man, and if I had a better, smarter coach in the corner, because I went through this with my coach, I said, bro, you should have son. He goes, I'm, it's my fault. This is what I said to you before about having a good cornerman. Yeah, my coach acknowledged that. Hey, my boy was hurt, and yeah. I should have not let him continue. Yeah, I'll give you an example. If you've ever seen the fight with Dennis Alexio and. Branko Sikatik. If I you ever saw that, that fight, fight. I, it out. I haven't seen it, no. It ended up in a technical draw or no contest or something. Mm. But the moral to the story is when a fighter does something dirty, like Alexio hit him when the, when the referee said break and he hit him. And when he went down, he tried to kick him and he did all this stuff. And, and Branko was not 100%, right? So his coach, Tom Herrick, you heard of the name Tom Herrick? No, I haven't heard of him, no. Okay, Tom Herrick was the, the coach of uh, Mike, uh, Peter Arts and, and Branko Sigatik, the original. Chakaruki, Chakaruki Jim okay. in Holland. Anyway, but what I'm saying to you is, as a coach, he would not let Branko continue. That's a smart thing. Yeah. Because if he looks at you, you look at your fighter, you look at him in the eyes, you go, hey, hey, are you okay? Tell me the truth, are you okay? Oh, I'm seeing stars. Well, why would you let your boy go out and fight? Yeah, 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 totally. Totally. Oh, I'm I agree. Just saying. Yeah, you have to save your fighter because they have that <laughs> warrior's heart, especially if they're a high level fighter. They're yeah, going to keep going. Most fighters, most fighters, we've got pride. Yeah, exactly. Right, you, think, you think I want to say, hey, hey, I want to quit. Mm. I want to quit. Hey. It's the coach's job to pull you out. Hey, that's what I'm saying to you. Like, if my coach was on the ball, yeah. Hey, we would have got our 70 grand that I got for that fight. For example, let's say I would have kept the belt and we'll do it again. I'm just saying, yeah. but it's a learning process. So this is, again, I'm saying to you with your fighters, professionalism, bro, a good corner. Yeah. If you want to be professional, you need a good mentor. You need yeah. a coach that cares about you. This mm -hmm. is a dangerous sport. A good yeah. coach is that one that if your fighter is getting hurt, you feel every shot. That's what sort of coach you want to have in the corner. Yeah. It's a tough gig. I mean, that move, when he held your back, it looked like he, he snapped your spine over the rope. Yeah, bro. I'm not trying to... Yeah, look, I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to justify or make excuses. I got smacked after that. No problem. I love Andy, bro. Like yeah. I said, you know, he's no longer with us. I'm not trying to get some credibility. But that was a bad move. And you can see... You can see when he bent me over... How low it was and how I mean, yeah. I'm not bullshitting. So I could sit down like other people, like Bob Sapp. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, but it's the Greek, it's it's the Greek pride, hey. Oh, you hey, it's, the, it's the Hellenic blood, bro. I've got to get up. I will not quit. Yeah. And but if you look at that from that moment onwards, because it's all been spliced a little bit. From that moment onwards, I'm getting bashed. I was not the same. Mm. And that's what happens. I'm saying, hey, that's the fight game. Things happen sometimes. You're lucky. You get away with some things. Yeah. Sometimes you're unlucky. Sometimes you get a bad decision. Sometimes there's corruption. And it's the fight game. Yeah. That's all part of it. So, Stan, the next question I want to ask, how do you feel combat sports have evolved to this day? I mean, you know, we're seeing a lot of evolutions taking place around us. I mean, what's your take on everything that's happening nowadays? Uh, look, I don't know. Look, the latest, biggest thing and the latest extension to... And again, I even, I even debate this sometimes with some people on different uh, programs, but is 
MMA, the latest extension of martial arts? It's a question to you. I think, I think it's moving in that direction. I think uh, it's bringing light, a lot of light to, to a lot of different martial arts. And it's are you, highlighting- are you, a, are, you, are you a big MMA fan? Uh, I'd say I'm more of a, a Muay Thai kickboxing fan, but I, I do yeah. watch MMA. I do watch UFC. Yeah. You know, I, I like, I get into the events and stuff. I'm a, I'm a fan, but I'm more of a yeah, Muay yeah. Thai. If, if there's a big fight, if there's a big fight on, there's a lot of talk about a big fight. Yeah, I might be interested to watch it. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, look, yeah, definitely. I, 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 look, I think, I think what is starving in the MMA world and, you know, again, people have their perception on what they're going to think of my opinion. But look, it's starving of good characters, good role models, bro. I mean, look, look at John Jones. Right, yeah. Okay, we talk about the talent. Yeah. I'm just saying, you see yeah. what I'm getting at? Yeah, definitely. This is what I'm talking about. I'll give you another example. I'll give you another example, bro. You know, I saw a fighter that fought and his mentor, I'm not... You know, without naming anyone, but all I'm saying yep. is, if I'm going to mentor somebody, again, it's all about attitude, bro. You can find someone else that doesn't mind. I'm this sort of guy. Yeah. If we get a chance to fight MMA, which won't happen because I don't coach or train that, but if I had a chance to bring a fighter to have his first MMA fight on a big UFC show with Dana White, and my boy wins, and he gets on the mic, and excuse my language, I don't like to swear normally, but I'm okay. going to be totally totally transparent and my boy wins and he grabs the mic and he goes do you fucking know who i am now mm. when we go backstage <laughs> <coughs> when we go backstage i will say to my boy you talk shit like that again pack your bags and piss off because mm. i will not tolerate that bro oh, i'm just saying you know for me for me who enjoyed what you said? 25% of the undesirable fans. Who enjoyed what you said? Potential sponsors. Yeah, there might be some crew that sell some shitty product that want characters like you. But all I'm saying is for me, that's not the style of how I want things. Right? Let me tell you something. Yeah. I told you before, I discovered Mike Zambetti's. I brought him to Australia. His first 12 fights or 15 fights, wherever they were, were through me. When I had enough of him because he didn't fulfill, he didn't fulfill my prerequisite. Interesting, eh? Mm. Hey, hey, isn't that an interesting point? Yeah, it is. Because he had amazing talent, but there was a characteristic that he had that didn't sit well with me. So I ended right. our relationship. I and then he said to me, why, why, what, what, what? I said, no, because he was, an, you know, he was unappreciative of a lot of things. He was just character, like I said, mm -hmm. character. Now, when he broke up with me, we finished, it showed for me what an amateur he was in many ways, bro, because when a fighter, all he wants to do is make money. Yeah. All he wants to do is make money and he compromises corner people. Like he'd have, he'd have five fights. He'd have five different trainers in all those five fights. Wow. That's how, because his attitude was, hey, listen, you want to come with me to Japan? Come with me, but you're not getting paid. You're not getting paid. Because it's all about money. Hey, right. When he fought Wayne Parr in Melbourne, he fought Wayne Parr in Melbourne. He had his team there. He got cut open. There's no Vaseline in the corner. No, no. Hey, is that a professional? No. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. You, can't, hey, you can't cut corners, bro, mm. and try to proclaim you're a, you're a class act champion. I'm just saying. There's a lot of different narratives. But when it comes to talent, he had amazing talent. Like I said, you look at his show reel, yeah. I don't despise. Hey, you no. know, we get on well. I, I don't go, you know, if I see my, hello, I've got a problem. I forgive everybody and move forward. But what I'm saying is, if you look at his show reel, amazing talent. And I still get, I get joy watching him saying, <laughs> hey, I recognize that yeah. talent before anybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I look at the pros, not the cons. I don't yeah. look at the disappointment because then they, I got rid of him for other reasons. You know what I'm saying? You're a good I'll give example. You an example. You're a good example of someone that was able to build his name up and get to a really high level of international recognition without yeah. having to go down that trash talking, 
you know, sw- like just negative routes, really. You didn't have to build your name through negative means. You were able to do it through a classy, positive, and it's your talent too that was able to get you that recognition, you know, and get you that, that, that fame. Look, at the end of the day, like a, a lot of people say to me, and I stand and I say, I enjoy watching you fight because I was, I had a bit of pay, whatever I paid, I paid for a VIP ticket because, see, it's one thing to be a, 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 a great fighter, but to be able to put bums on seats, mm-hmm. you know, there's got to be a bit of a, a bit of charisma. There's got to be some element of, you know, as a product. I mean, I would come in with music that would really create an atmosphere. I would come in with my style, with my theatre, whatever it may be, with doing the splits and, you know, throwing the kick. Yeah. But there's a very fine line. I always say this, Steve. There's a very fine line where people watch you and they go, wow, oh, I love this guy. You know, he's carrying, oh, he's doing me. There's a, a fine line where you cross that line and you become cocky and then suddenly the audience says, oh, I want to see this prick get bashed. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, a it's very like a fine line. Road. You're walking on the tightrope. But truly, I mean, yeah. to be able to be charismatic, you know, to the to the point where people watching to go, wow, man, I'll pay anything to watch Dan. It's, it's such an awesome, you know, theatre, you know, the music, the atmosphere, <coughs> all that, you know, is all well and good. But like I said, there's a fine line because we've got great fighters here like Anthony Mundine, but when you cross the line, yeah. Then the audience want to see you get bashed. A, a lot of fight fans went to watch Muhammad Ali because they wanted to see him get bashed. True, true, true. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's very interesting. I mean, I don't know if you've heard of one championship, but one championship, yeah. I would say, is a good example of a promotion that's being developed and built around the kind of like the, I would say, almost the opposite of UFC, you know? So they have their yeah. own monopoly because they're they're i mean they're they're deep rooted in asian martial arts which you know as you're aware of has a huge amount of respect and honor and discipline and you know and there's a lot of um you know fighters from different disciplines like muay thai karate etc cetera, etc cetera, that come from that region so you know they it, it kind of takes away a lot of that um negativity that you're referring to in in the mma scene in, in the ufc Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so just some, just something you know to think of. I mean, I'm, I know I'm, you've probably had your own experiences and stuff, and you can, you know, tell me something. But it's all good. <laughs> now, I, I haven't seen too much of the one championships. I know a very good old friend of mine, Michael Chavello, who does the commentator. You know, Michael. Oh Chavello, yeah, yeah, Mike. Sure. Yep, yep. Yeah, I go back a long, long, long way with Michael Chavello. In fact, Michael Chavello, the very first show he ever saw. Yeah. was a show that I invited him to. Wow. Was when I fought Dennis, when I fought Dennis Alexio, and I broke his leg. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was the first fight. Yeah. yeah. And and his career started off from all there, and he's doing great. He's a great he's a great um, commentator. He's brought out his book, and he's doing very well. So is that that's the new big thing right now. One championship. Yeah, that, I mean, for I would say for striking sports. So one. What about glory? 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 So now all the, the big glory fighters, they're moving over to one championship. So you look really? at all the... Are we going to see, are we gonna see another one from, um, what's his name? Barahari and Nico? Rico? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. And the reason why is because I think Bada, his body is starting to fall apart now. You know, yeah. he's getting these injuries that, you know, if you're, if you're training properly and you condition properly, they, they don't happen. But, you know, I think it's he's relying on his talent and what he, before his youth, would allow him to get away with. Now that's that's kind of fading away. He's not able to kind of perform at that same level yeah, without the training maybe, and the hard work. Yeah, maybe, maybe the, the protein juice is not going to be able to help him. <laughs> the protein juice, exactly. But if you look at one championship, Stan, they're pulling in all the big top names of strikers from around the world. You know, you've got uh, Petrosian. I don't know if you've heard of him before. But I you, have, I have. You've I've got, seen, um, I've seen. You, yeah, he's, he's amazing. You've got Petrosian, you've got Yodson Clay, you've got uh, John Wayne Parr, I think now, you've got Jabba Askarov, you've got all these guys, Andy Sauer. You know, they're pulling in all the top names. And they've yeah, they're, 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 Andy Sauer's still going? 
He is. He is. He wow. he fought. He's still fighting on one. You know, yeah. it's crazy. John, it's I mean, amazing, like John, John yeah, Wayne exactly. Parr, yeah. They just don't but, know when to call it. Let Quick. me say this. <laughs> let me say this, Steve. For what it's worth, I'll say this yeah. on your broadcast. For me, um, now, not including myself, but who? If you said to me, who is uh, another martial artist or con- combat fighter from Australia that you acknowledge as someone worth mentioning? And I would say to you, definitely, definitely John Wayne Parr. For me, is, <laughs> and I, I'm not just saying that because yeah. for me, he loves what he does mm. and he's done so much and he sacrificed so much. Mm. And the last time I even spoke to him, I said, you know, something for me, you've surpassed even what I've done because everything I've done, you've been able to do in your own way. Because I remember when he was young, you know, you got to understand something. When he was young, he had pictures of me on his folders at school. That's how much <laughs> he was a big fan of mine. That's so when, awesome. I fought in, when I fought in Thailand for that title, yeah. he flew six, 16 years of age. He flew to Thailand to train and watch me fight. Wow. So, awesome. Wayne Parr for me, you know, he has done everything. But you know what the biggest amazing thing about John Wayne Parr is? I gave up having a family because I wanted my dream. I, like, I took off mm. chasing my dream. He achieved what he has achieved and juggled a family of three or four kids that he's got. You know, like, yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable, bro. It's like, unbelievable. Absolutely amazing. Now, I'll say this. If you say to me, you and John Wayne Park, get on well, yeah, we always got on well. We got, I mean, I had never had a problem with him until... I brought Mike Zambides into the scene. <laughs> well, those you days are three from freaking... Yeah, they had a great trilogy, you know. But let yeah. me say this. I always loved Wayne Parr, bro. I always got on well. I, I'm so proud of his achievements. He's a wonderful guy. But, you know, at the time, I had my boy with Zambides. Now, we had a press conference for... I'm not sure which one of the three fights they had, but yeah. we had a press conference. It might have been the first, maybe one. Um... And at the press conference, there was no interest, really, disappointing. There was no you know, media or nothing. Mm. Pretty, pretty sort of somber kind of atmosphere. So to, to bring up a bit of hype and a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of something that people could talk about when they walked out of there, yeah. I happened to be standing next to Bob Jones, if that name rings a bell to you at all. Yeah, but yeah. Very well He's the guy that is... Uh, you know, he's recognised as bringing kickboxing to Australia, so to speak, back in the day, many, many years ago. But a very well-known figure in the martial arts world and, and kickboxing back then. But anyway, he was standing next to me and they finished the press conference and I said to Bob, I said to Bob, hey, this is what I'm going to say. This. And I go, look, I go, Zambi, I go, Wayne Parr, Wayne. I go, listen, I, I, I believe that Mike's going to knock you out and if he knocks you out, are you going to retire? And John Wayne Parr, <laughs> Look at me, he's like, his eyes lit up. And I kind of tried to give him a wink, you know, like I'm trying, I'm trying, to, right. I'm trying to give him a wink. So, you know, he knows, I'm just trying to build up a bit of hype, right? Because it's dead, hype. you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no one, it's, a, it's a, like, it looks like it was a funeral, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like there was yeah. nothing. Yeah. And I thought, when I said that, everyone turned around and looked at me, you know? Yeah. Everyone looked at me. Bob Jones, the guy that's standing next to me, goes, that's, that's uncharacteristic of you. And it was. <laughs> it's, not, it's not in my character to just you know, have a go at somebody yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and Wayne Power of all people. But when I sort of said it, I kind of winked at him. But I think it was very confronting for him. And he goes, what do you mean? I'm scheduled to fight three weeks after Mike Zambini's. And he, goes, <laughs> and, he goes, <laughs> and he got upset from that day. And I think from that day onwards, he always had a bit of a, uh. you know. Yeah, I think he was a bit disappointed after that. Look, it's all good. Actually, today's his birthday. I even sent him a Facebook message oh. that, yeah. So, now nah, look, I've got a lot of respect for for Wayne Parr. He's, he's amazing, and to still be doing it. I mean, I'm freaking <laughs> out. You know, to still be doing it. Oh, yeah. And even he stepped into boxing, and he was able to beat Anthony Mundine. I mean, that's another. Yeah, and that's another great thing because you know that poor kid. Like I said to you, it's the same thing as me back in the day. You know, I was fighting. Hey, listen to this. I mean, I fought in Thailand. I became the world Muay Thai heavyweight champ. And at another, at another event that took place in the boxing show, uh, they presented me with this award in front of 80,000 people 
where the king of Thailand gave me this award for becoming the world Muay Thai champion. And that wasn't newsworthy. In Australia, it wasn't newsworthy. Wow. So I understood, you know, for Wayne, all these years, you know, always wanted to get that acknowledgement. Yeah. And he finally got some acknowledgement after beating up a washed up Anthony Bundeen. But people got to recognise who he is and all his accolades and achievements now yeah. after that win with Mundine. I'm saying that I, that's what I suffered back in those days. Here right. I am fighting around the world in front of big stadiums, but there was no newsworthy uh, information on the, on the channels. Mm. I mean, I fought in front of 60,000 people in, in Japan, um, and then no one talks about that, a great victory, uh, but they're right, or on the news, they'll talk about how heavy Shane Warne's poo was when he had a shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's ridiculous, eh? Ridiculous. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Bloody ridiculous, eh? Anyway. Dude. But that's why it was great, you know, to be inducted in the Sports Australia Hall of Fame. I'm just saying that was a great, a great night. That was great. Yeah. Um, Stan, the next thing I wanted to ask is just um, how can people kind of stay connected with your journey? And I know that you uh, have this, uh, this group, Stan the Man Group. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about that and, and just about yeah. your journey now and how people can yeah. kind of stay connected with you? Yeah. They can connect with us and through what we're doing, through Stand The Man Group. We're on LinkedIn as well. I mean, these are all the areas that Maria, with all her experience after many years, over 20 years of strategy and different things that she's been able to put programs together with a lot of the philosophy of my experience and through my journey, what I've learned through different mentors. You know what I mean? You know, again, like I say to you, it's all about personal development and constant growth. We yep. are always growing, always growing. If you think you know it all, then it's time to die. I'm just saying we are always growing, always learning. But through, through our work, you know, we have the privilege to be able to uh, create customized products for individuals and depending on the mission statements of companies. But again, it's like having a coach in-house or you know, coming to visit and spending time with your staff. Uh, it's important to have good morale. I mean, you got to understand every company understands that every individual has a life before they come to work. Yep. So you want to make sure that everyone, again, you know, through the power of mindset, they're able to be the best possible um, soldiers for, for, your, for, your, for your workers, I'm saying. So we could do a lot of different projects that we do. Maria does a lot of um, um, corporate challenges that we do, various yep. things to break the monotony, but it's all again about personal development and growth awesome. in all those aspects that I shared with you today. There's a lot of different things that I shared with you today that all combine into the wisdom and knowledge and the programs that we share. Wow. That's so cool, man. That's awesome. All right, Stan. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for coming on the show. It's been an absolute honor. And just honestly, you've got a wealth of knowledge in that brain of yours and it's, it's been awesome, man. So I'm, I'm very honored to have you on the show. And it's been a great, great, great time for me to hear all your stories. It's a wonderful way to be introduced to you. We'll make sure that we stay connected and in touch. And, uh, you know, hopefully there's some good feedback from your viewers and listeners. And uh, let's uh, make sure we stay in touch and we do this again sometime in the near future. For sure. For sure. 150%, my man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah, God, God bless you, bro. Bye. God bless you too. And thank you, Maria. Maria, Maria Pepper, come here, Maria. Getting up this, this uh, Maria, beautiful come interview. Come <laughs> <laughs> hey, how long have we been going? Maria's been rolling her eyes at me for a little while now. A little while now. Hey, yeah. Did I not thank tell you. you? Thanks, Stan. Yeah. What did she say? What did she say? Stan <laughs> won't shut up. <laughs> yeah. Now you yeah. understand this me, yeah? This is Maria, so uh, <laughs> everyone can say hi to her. Hi, Maria. So hey, just to say you? thank you very much for, for uh, setting this up. Um, this is the, the lovely lady behind Stan the Man. So uh, thank you so much, Maria, for, for making this happen. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. And regards to everybody, stay safe, and we'll speak to you soon. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Over and out. Hey, guys. Steve here. If you like the content, please don't forget to press like, and subscribe to stay up to date with the most recent episodes. I'll see you guys on the next one.